With the Major League Baseball strike looming, everyone seems to be turning their attention towards football. And here in the Empire, it's no exception as tonight's Kiwanis All-Star Football League game kicks off the football season here to start soon for high school football in the North Bay and Sonoma County Leagues. But first, a trip back. The graduated All-Stars will go at it here tonight at Bailey Field, the 21st Kiwanis All-Star Football game. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Cox, along with Graham Rutherford. And Graham, this game has symbolized the start of the football season for 21 years. And, of course, last year, signals a change in this game, the SCL against the NBL. And uh, still a lot of big names come out for this game, and it should be an exciting football game here tonight. I think so. It's really great weather out here tonight. It was only nine months ago that we were sitting out here in the rain, and it was November. But this is a last chance for many of these people to play a game. Um, some of them will continue on, a fair amount at the JC, a few amount going on to four-year schools. But I think for these guys, it's a great chance to do something for another group of people. The Kiwanis mainly support children's charities, and that's what they're mainly going to be supporting out here tonight. A lot of big names from last season's high school football year. And some guys will really be looking forward to seeing out here for one last time at the high school level. Enoch Dix from Cardinal Newman. Uh, really an exciting player, and of course he's going to be playing basketball next year, so this will be his last football game, unless they catch wind of his football skills down at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and a lot of other big names here. It should be really exciting. Who are the guys you're looking forward to see one more time, Graham? Well, I think particularly some of the SCO players, like Silva, who's going on to Princeton, is a superb quarterback, exciting to watch. Justin Elzey um, from Casa Grande, a great receiver, um, out just in the playoffs last year, played really well. Um, somebody he's going to plan to walk on in Minnesota, evidently, so I think some of these people we will get to see again and a few other um, people miles and graham from um, the sonoma county league and reeser from the nbl going on to sac state so i think we will get a chance to see some of these people and fortunately at the junior college we'll see a great deal of these people in terms of offense these two teams have complete opposite situations the north bay league is a little bit thin at the quarterback position and in fact their starter tonight chris curtis did not play quarterback last season at santa rosa high school on the other hand sonoma county league is loaded with four guys that can all play the position very well that's true they play they would probably like to have a couple balls in the game, and the NBL is going to count on their offensive line and defensive line skill. We'll see a really, uh, a really different type of offense from the Sonoma County League, depending on who is at quarterback. Silva will run the wishbone that was featured at Petaluma, and Kelly will come out and throw the ball a little bit more. So it's going to present some problems for the defensive side of things for the North Bay League. Sure, as will Aguilar from Hillsburg. If he can go, he can throw the ball a mile. And I think um, when the NBL has it, now Coach Arterbury did tell us that he is planning on running and passing, so we're looking forward to see what they can do. But there is no doubt, as you said earlier, that they're working with a real challenge at the quarterback position. So the NBL and the SCL will be set to go at it. And it should be an exciting football game here tonight. The NBL will be in the red and white jerseys. And the SCL will be in the white jerseys. They're going to come out to the center of the field, toss up the coin. And that will give us a, t a chance to take a quick break. And we will be back with tonight's kickoff in just a moment. Kimo Agillon will drop back deep for them along with Royal Talton. And this will be the starting offense tonight. On the line, Hervey Williams, Louis Godoy, Dan Joseph, Dan Weising, and Matt Sully. Enoch Dix at wide receiver, Joe Easton at tight end, Drew Hill at the flanker position, Chris Curtis is the quarterback, Adam Shoemaker is the fullback, and Joe Johnson and, Devo and Devon Jenkins will switch off at tailback tonight for the North Bay League. Larry Arterbury mentioned he would like to throw the ball a little bit here tonight. He's not the kind of guy that even though they are thin at quarterback will just stick to the ground. So it'll be interesting to see how well Chris Curtis does tonight at the quarterback position. Graham, he said that he had a few days to work with him, and he was very impressed with the progress that he made, and the guy has some natural talent. So we'll see if he does all right here tonight. I hope so. I think uh, sometimes, you know, one coach may see something that another coach didn't, and these people are growing. I'm always amazed each year how somebody makes this great progress, and I think we'll see it in the regular high school season. We'll see it with some of these people at J.C. We will mention as we go on tonight where some of these players will be going to college next year. And pretty easy job of it for the North Bay side of things. It's just about all their guys are going to 
SRJC. Big kick by Aguilar into the end zone. Aguilar kicks it to the very back of the end zone. That'll be a touchback and already some hitting going on out there. Adam Shoemaker mixing it up with number 45 for the STL. That's Chris Van Dorn. Two hard-hitting guys and you can tell that these guys uh, are looking forward to getting a chance to hit a little bit. Larry Artiberti talked about that in his practices. Uh, he said he was having trouble keeping the guys from just about killing each other. One thing I think for the fans tonight, too, uh, even though we've got the red jerseys and white jerseys, notice that all the players are wearing their own helmets, and that's always a nice thing for these games, kind of spot the mix that's out there and see your favorite helmet and who's wearing what. Give is to the fullback straight up the middle. That's Caruso. Looks Santa like Rosa. Jim Caruso. So already they changed their starters just a little bit as Caruso gets the first handoff for a couple of yards for the NBL. And we'll set the SCL defense for you. Okay. Well, we... All right. At the nose guard, we've got Thebert of Sonoma, number 57. The tackle is uh, Dan Zamora of Annaly, number 63. The other tackle, John Cooper of Petaluma, number 78. The snap is fumbled. Curtis picks it up. The ball's still loose, and the SCL has it at the NBL 20-yard line. That's Christian Rouse, a strong safety, jumping on that loose ball. And that's a big turnover in deep. They've got to be happy about that. So the SCL will take over and will now set their offense for you. Yeah, well, since we didn't get all the defenders in there, we'll catch them next time out. The quarterback uh, starting tonight is going to be Tom Silva of Petaluma. He'll be going to Princeton next year. Superb all-around player. Um, you've also got Justin Elsey, one wide receiver. Um, the other one, Tony Rossetti of Petaluma. The tight end, Mike Graham of Petaluma. Um, you've got Sean Freitas of Anley at one running back and Mark Hernsworth of Petaluma at the other running back. Here they're in their set. Give this straight up the middle. That's Hermsmeyer out of Petaluma High School, and he's got nothing there. And we'll try and set the defense for you uh, for the NBL in just a moment. We're going to take a look at the fumble again, however. Well, there's a quarterback never really got the snap. A lot of trouble coming down the line there, and then the ball gets hit out of his hand. Anytime you've got a game like this, that's always a problem where the coordination between the center and the quarterback isn't the same. That's the kind of thing that on a regular season you're always practicing all the time. Quarterbacks and center should know each other really well. That just the slightest hesitation, quarterback pulls out a little early, and that ball can get loose easy. Hermsmeyer is the fullback. Man in motion, Silva to throw, looking for Justin Elsie, and it's right through his hands. Had his man beat on the corner, Kimo Aguilan, but the ball just went right through his hands, and you can tell it's been a while since these guys have been out here getting, getting uh, things mixed up a little bit early, trying to work out the kinks. That's true. I, tell you, I, I never saw Elsie drop a pass during the regular season. Um, the rest of the offensive starters for the Sonoma County, Steve Miles of Casa Grande is the center. Pete Hicks is a guard. Petaluma, number 52. Um, the other guard, number 74, Brian Fikes of Annaly. Um, you've got one tackle is uh, John Cooper, 78 of Petaluma, and the other tackle, Gabe Perez, number 50 of Annaly. Wishbone set now for Silva. This is a familiar one for him, and he has trouble with the snap, and he gets hit hard right off the, right after he picked up the ball by Chris Barrett from Montgomery. Yeah, and again, I think there you've got a Casa Grande center, a Petaluma quarterback. Um, you know, players that know each other, there's a little bit of uh, understanding between. They they ride, they know the feel, and you know, the quarter comes up to the line, could be a lot of trouble. Let's see that on the replay there. He's, he's got his hands in, he's looking, and, and the ball just isn't there. He doesn't have a handle. You know, if the center doesn't push it up all the way, or, um, you know, if the quarterback starts to pull out, it's, it's very difficult. Well, this is going to be a long field goal attempt we're going to see here coming up. Gabe Aguilar will try and put the SCL on the board first with a 35 yarder and his kick is up and it's no good as it sails off to the right pushed it just a little bit and now the NBL after dodging that bullet will go back on the attack offensively yeah I'd say there the SCL had two good chances one the touchdown and two um, usually Aguilar very very good kicker um, but it was out from the hash mark and, it, and as you know that a high school and college hash marks are wider out Seemed to kick it pretty well. 45 yards is a long way to go. Here comes the NBL to try again. Curtis pitches out to Joe Johnson, and he is met head on, but manages to break a tackle and pick up a couple of yards for the NBL. 
Yeah, and some of the people making those tackles going to be uh, Ken Fritchie of Petaluma is an outside linebacker. The other outside linebacker, Mike Turner of Petaluma. Inside Petaluma, John Leal, number three, an inside linebacker. And Chris Van Door, number 45 of Hillsburg, another inside linebacker. Um, you've also got um, some other down people here. We got, uh, oh, sorry, can't lost my list. Second and eight now for the NBL. I formation behind Chris Curtis. Johnson takes the handoff and gets out to the 25. Pickup of three for the NBL. It'll be third down. And here's those down linemen for the SL. Nick Solomon at Costa Grande at one tackle. Dan Zamora, Anley at the end tackle. And Elon Thiebert, the nose guard um, from Sonoma. Here's another look at that run. Tackle was made in there by Thiebert. Well, at least um, Curtis had a few handoffs in a row now. Again, since he hasn't played quarterback before until tonight, getting that handoff is going to be something he's really going to have to concentrate on. I mean, just something he has to really practice. Dix to the near side, Hill to the far side. The pass is intended for Hill, but it's in and out of his hands. Good coverage that time by Tony Rosati from Petaluma. He was all over Hill, and the pass was incomplete. Well, and I guess we're going to get to see our first punt. Really have no idea who the punter is going to be. It looks like Chris Barrett will drop back. Good solid punter for Montgomery for the last couple of seasons, and he'll get a chance to hit this one from about the 15-yard line. Good snap. Elsie's a dangerous returner. Elsie waiting for it back on the 35. Breaks a tackle at the 40 to the 45. And still on its feet, but knocked out of bounds at midfield. Good field position again for the SCL. Yeah, Drew Hill knocked him out of bounds at the 50. Yeah, it looks like about a 10-yard return. He almost popped that through the outside. And I think Elsie's uh, feeling a little better with his hands there. That's a nice high kick. 40-yard kick and a 15-yard return. Here you see Elsie with a little bit of fancy footwork. And there he is stepping out right there. Silva still at quarterback for the Sonoma County League. And Silva looking to throw, now keeps it, and gets nothing on first down. Now the SL's formation there is rather interesting. They talked before the game about running the wishbone and maybe using passing, but really with the three backs sitting back there, I think if they're in the same set when we come up, you'll see they're really in a, in a classic older full house. And then they put um, number 24, um, Freitas from Annaly in motion, which is somebody that he could uh, get a lateral from. Hervey Williams and Doug Vanderpool that time, the Montgomery teammates hooked up on that. And we'll now set the rest of the defense. Jerome Arterberry, Bing Gleason, Doug Vanderpool, Jason Cheard, Chris Barrett, Jim Crusoe, and Chris Burke are the front seven. The defensive backs, Buckley, Aguilon, Gage, Gunderson, and Henley. Silva keeps on second down and picks up perhaps one that time. Well, so defenses always seem to have the edge in this type of game, Graham. It's really hard to get anything going with an offensive scheme, and you've got great athletes out there on defense that know how to go after the football. That's true. There's no doubt about that. I mean, they're, you know, doing all that they can. He, he's riding in there on the fullback. He looks. There's two guys. I mean, you know, maybe a little practice. So they had to read you know, who they were going to be going against. You'd know when you'd want to pitch. And, you know, maybe that would have been open. But it, it is much harder on the offense in an all-star game. Third and nine now for the Sonoma County League from the 48. Silva looking deep for Elsie. Johnson working on him, but Elsie's got it at the 10, down at the 5 by Johnson. Great throw and catch that time. Silva to Elsie, first and goal. Sonoma County League, a pickup of 43 yards. Well, that was really, the two of them were bumping each other down the line looking for a spot, and Elsie made the much more difficult catch on that play. Well, also, I'd say, Dave, you know, as you were talking earlier about with the offense, I'd say that in a game like this, you're going to see maybe offensively a lot of big plays. You're not going to see um, as likely to have an 80-yard drive. You're going to see somebody make the big play like that. And uh, that, was, that was a really nice pass by Silva. Whistles blow before the snap. A timeout taken by the NBL. Our first timeout of the night, so the teams will huddle up talk with the coaches a little bit and see the NBL will see if they can stop the SCL as we take a break and we'll be back
in the first quarter with no score here at Bailey Field in the 21st Kiwanis All-Star Football Game. Burger King on Mendocino Avenue is proud to announce its grand reopening, featuring the new soft play playground for kids. Kids will love the soft play playground's twisty slide, the bouncy ball bath, and the wiggly web designed to absorb the roughest play. After your kids are through playing in the new soft play playground, let them enjoy a hamburger kids meal for only $1.99. Plus, everybody gets free drink refills. Don't miss the grand reopening. CL leads it 6-0 here in the first quarter. Well, that's a great example of some teamwork there and then the two Petaluma players who've worked all so well during the year showing why they can run that multi-attack option. Silva, one of the things he does really well is ride the fullback deep and he gives that the, a long look. You know, he can take it out, pull back out. It was a really, really nice play. Gabe Aguilar now on to add the point after for the Sonoma County League. And his kick is good. It's 7-0, Sonoma County League, with 6.17 to go here in the first quarter at Bailey Field. We'll take a break and be back with the kickoff after this. CL, four plays covering 50 yards. Yeah, and the big play, Elsie making the nice catch on the side. I think he's feeling a little bit better and not any problems for him right now. Aguilar kicking deep for Dix and Talton. They kick it away from Dix again, and Aguilar kicks it right out of the end zone again. Looks like he could use that new NFL rule and kick off from the 30 the way he's booting it today. Well, here's our here's the touchdown coming up again and we get to see only there Hernsmeyer bursts through the tackle two collide, players collide from the NBL and he's in the end zone without trouble but I think the play really made there by Silva riding the fullback deep they don't know if he is going to give the ball or keep the ball give is up the middle pretty good run that time for the NBL by Caruso and perhaps their biggest play from scrimmage yet as he gets out to about the 26-yard line on first down. A pickup of six for the NBL. Yeah, the NBL giving the fake of the multi-option. I'll be curious to see if Curtis, um, who's a really good all-around athlete, gets a chance to run the ball, too. Tim Gunderson now in the ballgame, a wide receiver for the NBL. He comes out wide to the near side. The give is to Caruso again, and he's got a first down and more out past the 40 to the 45, still on his feet at the 49-yard line. First first down of the night for the North Bay League. Oh, yeah, Caruso runs really hard. Good job there. I mean, he met Walsh, and uh, he just kept his legs going, and nobody told him he had to stop. They were going to take usually more than one guy to take down Jim Caruso. 22 yards for Caruso. They actually spotted at the 45, so that's a 19-yard gain. Gets the ball inside and pops it to the outside. Pick the leg, and right there, he meets Walsh and keeps driving, keeps driving, and almost actually breaks it loose there. Curtis to throw, looking deep down the right side for Gunderson but it's just a little bit too far out in front. Well, for somebody who hadn't played quarterback before, that was a nice pass. If there was a nice spiral on it, I think timing will be something for him, but uh, looked good setting up, throwing off the back of his foot. Nice pocket for him. He's got some outstanding receivers to throw to. I think, um, you know, if they can uh, get somebody open and he can get the ball there, they, they may have some big plays of their own coming up. We see Chris Curtis in the huddle now for the NBL. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line. 
best field position of the night for the North Bay League. Pitch out goes to Devon Jenkins. He can turn the corner, but he is nailed. Good hit by Chris Van Doren, along with a little bit of help from John Cook from Sonoma. And they ran a counter option on that play. Okay, watch Curtis here with the countering action. He turns, makes the fake, comes all the way around, and unloads that ball just in time. Tough play for the quarterback to make, and, and Jenkins looks good right here, but boy, here comes some players ready to make an impact. Pitch out to Jenkins again. He's got some blockers in front, but he cuts inside, and Chris Van Dorn is right there to nail him at the 47-yard line. No gain. Yeah, unfortunately, he uh, took a uh, left right into the pursuit. Three white shirts coming down on him there. And, and again, you know, that's something that you don't always have the time to practice. You don't know your offensive lineman that well. Um, it's, it's a difficult problem. Penalty marker on the field. Preliminary looks like it's going to be against the NBL and perhaps a hold, at least from where it was located there on the line. Well, it looks like they're not taking the penalty and they're going to take the down. And since there was no gain, they'll make a fourth down, make the NBL kick it away. Chris Barrett set to punt. Justin Elsie drops back deep for the Sonoma County League. Saw a 40-yard kick for Barrett his first time. This time it's a high snap. He brings it down and kicks it for the far sidelines and out of bounds. They'll spot it at about the 41, it looks like. So the SCL will be set up with pretty good field position once again. That's just about a 15-yard punt. Yeah, I think uh, he may have not got himself reset after that high snap was concerned to get it off, and he's trying to get to the sideline. And he just kind of pooched it off to the side there. That's too bad. 4.08 to go now here in the first quarter. SCL leading at 7-0. I think um, you're all seeing here tonight, the, uh, the referees are giving the uh, players a little slack on some of the more technical things, like getting plays off within the 25 second, giving them that chance. I mean, that's important. You know, people don't want to come out here and see a lot of flags and that. And it's, uh, it's hard enough learning the plays and working with new people and sometimes getting them off that quick. Scott Kelly is now in a quarterback for the Sonoma County League at a Casa Grande High School. And he pitches out to Sean Freitas for Manley. Freitas at the 40, cuts in at the 45, out of bounds at the 46. A gain of five yards. Jerome Arterbury in on the tackle for the North Bay League. Nice run by Freitas. Yeah, Freitas, the hard running running back um, the last couple years at Anley's really racked some yards up. Really tough kid for run. He'll be at the JC next year. Gets his pitch. He comes around the corner, and it looks like he's going to be stopped here, but he just keeps going. There's through one tackle, and sidesteps another, and all of these people. And the ball does go loose at the end, but it does go out of bounds. Someone got a helmet right on it there. I think it's Jim Caruso. He looked like he thought he might have had that ball. Second and six for the SCL. Kelly looking over the defense and hands to Freitas again. Freitas out past the 45 to the 47, a pickup of two. He is met there by Chris Burke from Piner, a great linebacker for the prospectors this past season. Yeah, I'd say the NBL line looks pretty solid. I mean, they, they pushed at first, and they closed their gaps really fast. Freitas hits the hole pretty hard, but uh, they did close down pretty effectively. I think uh, for them, they've just got to make sure that they don't let a guy like Elsie slip by into open space. And here he comes back in the game, and that is his quarterback that's in the game right now. Third down for the Sonoma County League. Four yards to go. They're on their own 47. And actually, you have Walsh split out to the other side. So you've got two Casa wide receivers and a Casa quarterback, and they wouldn't mind having five yards here. Aguilan covering Elsie one-on-one, -on -one, but the handoff goes to Freitas again, and he spins off one man at about the 49, but it's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. Pickup of two for Freitas as he gets all three carries on this drive, and that'll be fourth down, and that'll bring out Gabe Aguilar to punt. Well, here's the dive in. He's looking for some space, and number 20... Five just steps up right in there, Ron McGowan Montgomery. I know that Coach Arterbury was saying before the game that he thought McGowan was one of the best hitters that he had. Somebody who really stood out in practice for him. And he sure filled the hole fast there. 
Dropping back deep is Kimo Aguilan from Piner. Always dangerous on the punt return. A little bit of a high snap, and McGowan almost got there. Now he bumps Aguilar, but no call. The official was right on the scene. Yeah, I think uh, that time there, he kind of decided it was a good time to have a seat, but I don't think he'd call that roughing. He was pretty clear his leg was fine. 33-yard kick for Aguilar. The NBL will take over deep in their own territory again as we take a look at Ron McGowan putting well, some good snap, pressure on Here's him. the snap high. He gets set. McGowan putting the pressure on him. And you see the legs going up and coming back down. And he, then he just bumps him after. I don't think you're going to see that call in a game like this. Actually, our officials um, tonight are all working uh, the beginning of a season game for them. So this is a good opening practice for them. They'll be a month ahead of where they are, and we'll get to them in a few minutes. Curtis gives it to Jenkins, and Jenkins tries to get around the outside, just gets past the 20 to the 21, a pick up a three. Yeah, and a saving tackle there by Mike Graham of Petaluma kind of pulled him down from behind. Jenkins is very explosive, kind of guy that um, can really break one. Anyway, Ron Ruiz is the referee tonight. Okay, there's Curtis going back. Jenkins gets the ball. He's looking for all and watch him put his foot down here, and then he's going to break to the outside and, and a diving, diving grab there by Graham. Shoemaker straight up the middle, gets out past the 25, a pickup of two. Yeah, I think the NBL's counting on their strength there to move people off the ball, but um, they're going to have to open up better holes than that. It was the same before. Ron Ruiz is the referee tonight. The uh, umpire, Steve Arrow, uh, out on the headlinesman is Dennis McNeil. On um, the other sideline, the field judge is Steve Gritch, and the back judge is Ruben Candelaria. Nick Solomon, 96 from Casa Grande, was in on the tackle that time. Third down and three for the NBL. Curtis looking to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. And he will try and run for the first down. And he's going to get pretty close out to the 30. That should be enough yardage for an NBL first down. Yeah, that's going to be close. He's a good athlete. Curtis should have been had back there, and I'm sure they're unhappy to keep their containment. But uh, he ran hard, and then actually some good hitting at the end. I suppose even in a game like this, though, I know both teams are concerned about injuries. He steps back and he looks. You can see he's covered. He's got pressure coming. He moves out to the right, still looking for room to move. And then the containment's broken, and he puts his head down and makes a dive forward. Pickup of three, uh, the second NBL first down of the game. Jenkins to the 30, knocked out at about the 34. Some of four more yards for the NBL. Some great hustling pursuit there by the SCL down linemen and linebackers to get down there and close that play off. Uh, unfortunately for the NBL passing, that's they're going to have to really control that line. Turns, he makes the pitch out to Jenkins, and right there in his pocket, you get someone behind him, and here he comes around the corner, and there's just no room to go. Number five, Graham, there again and then other people finishing up on top. First quarter will come to an end before they can get off this play. So 15 minutes in the books here at Bailey Field. The teams will switch sides, and we'll take a break and be back with a start of quarter number two. It's the SCL 7, the NBL 0. Me and Professor Eugenius are going to do a mathematical deduction for you. Which is fresher, third party or our party? Third party bust the moves. No. Yo, teach, what about our party? Let's review. Our party? Their party. Wake up! Party sober and drug free with Friday Night Live. We make a lot of soups and salads at our house, and I like the produce department. We like the good prices and uh, the quality of the, of the different uh, merchandise. I really like the people. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I food for less. I always find the things I need, and I'm very pleased with that. I shop at Food for Less because the prices are the cheapest in town.
Joey Easton takes the pitch out and picks up 15 yards for the NBL and another first down. Yeah, he really picks his feet up. That was a nice, nice toss and good run by Easton there. Third first down for the NBL. They spotted at the 47-yard line. We're starting to see some more substituting going on here in the game. See Ben Gleason going in there at the uh, left tackle. Um, got some other people coming in looking for moving around. The 22 Gunderson split out here. Curtis looking for Gunderson. He's covered well. Now he does throw it to him at the 40, but it's a little bit low. Good job by Gunnarsson to keep active and shake loose there because he was well covered. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard there for Curtis. He's gonna, you're trying to move out of danger, but you've got to set your feet to make a good throw. It's very hard to jump and throw the ball back across your body with a pair of shoulder pads on, um, particularly if you're not used to it. And it's kind of hard for the quarterback to do that, but he's got to set his feet to throw the ball well, especially given his inexperience. Second and 10 now for the NBL. Easton past the 50 to the 48. Three yards for the NBL. The deepest penetration of the night so far for the North Bay League as Easton has two carries and 18 yards here in the second quarter. Actually, I said the play before that Gleason had gone at tackle, but I noticed in the last play he was over on the right side, and I think um, the NBL's got him in there as a tight end. Now, because he's wearing number 71, they won't be able to throw him the ball, but um, he's, here he's on the right side again. So they've, uh, maybe because they're a little short on the tight end position, and Gleason is a big guy, they've uh, slipped him in there as an, an additional blocker. But that does mean, realistically, he can't go downfield. Third and five for the NBL. Ball's loose. The SCL has it. That's Mike Graham from Petaluma that has the fumble at the 47-yard line of the NBL. Second turnover of the night. And that's a real penetration play by the SCL. Their quickness is um, starting to pay some dividends. They're pushing the line of scrimmage back a bit, um, getting some penetration on their angles, and uh, you know they'll be happy about that one on their sideline. So again, the NBL defense will be tested. Here's another look. Ball kind of bounces off his hip. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, if you don't pull that ball back, the other people are running forward, and they're going to run into that. And that, that's a hard thing when you've only had nine days of practice to get the ball out of the way. This Scott flag up. Kelly still at quarterback. The ball is tipped by Caruso and falls incomplete, but a couple of flags down. So we'll wait for the call. The preliminaries, it's going to be against the SCL. Surprise on the timing there between Kelly and Elsie. Uh, Elsie started to cut that back in shorter, and, and Kelly thought he was going deeper. So they were lucky not to throw a pick there. Got a motion call there against um, the SCL, and they're going to turn that down and take the play. So it's going to be second down. Second and 10 coming up now for the SCL. They had marched back a little bit thinking that they were going to take the penalty, so they've got a long ways to come out of the huddle this time. Make sure they're in a two-back formation here. Straight back. Kelly looking deep for Elsie. Elsie's got a step. The ball's just a little bit long. He put on a great move on Drew Hill. Yeah, Drew Hill is a very fast player, and Elsie was by him. That ball had hung just a little more. He would have run underneath that. Um, you know, like I said, when I saw LC play in the playoffs last year, I was really impressed with his all-around play, both offense and defense. And uh, I think he does have a legitimate chance when he does walk on in Minnesota to play there. Here goes LC. Kelly sets, gives it a little loft, hangs that ball up there, and it is just so close. Nice dive at the end there. Now he's got Dix covering over here on Elsie, and I think the NBL may be wise to put the bigger player on him. Oh, swing out. Swing pass goes to Freitas, and he gets all the way down to the 39-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. It's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down, but a pickup of eight yards. Yeah, uh, Matt Hanley really came over there and put a big hit on that is actually a running play, as you'll see here. They did throw it backwards. Well, Dix has Elsie, and he's got a backup to protect that. He's got to make sure that the running back doesn't take the ball and throw it forward. But there he is. He's taking the ball. Freitas going. He's kind of a little tough on the handle. He gets going there. Dix then comes up, which is a really good play by him. 
and he's going to get a little help here from Henley. There's a hit by first by Dix, but you can see that he's driving through, and then Henley arrives right on it and knocks him out. It's a good point again, Dave, that that play, because it was thrown behind the line of scrimmage, behind there as a lateral, could have been thrown forward as another pass, and Dick's going to have to be careful with that he had to protect LZ first. Freitas swings out. McGowan almost got a hand on it, but Freitas takes the pass and slides in at the 33-yard line for a first down and a pickup of seven. And McGowan's very quick, but, um, you know, that's, that's a good example there of Freitas' speed. Unfortunately, his feet go out from under him. But the SCL seems to be doing here, throwing some passes underneath. And that was a really good job there with their deep guys to run down, clear out some space for Freitas, give them some room to work in. They've, um, they've got some nice patterns going, and I think that uh, given, again, the limits of practice, they stacked the right side, they ran the two guys deeper off and just swung the back in underneath. Good poise by Kelly. So that is the third first down for the Sonoma County League as they are now at the 33-yard line of the NBL. One back behind Kelly. That's Freitas, and he goes in motion. Kelly looking left, now right. McGowan chasing him. And throw back across. Incomplete. Intended for Christian Walsh. And a penalty marker is down. Yeah, I thought McGowan was going to get Kelly there, but he just didn't hold the containment. It looks like the MBL is going to be the sitting side this time. A little bit of applause there from Kelly. He looks pretty happy about it. Good job by Kelly that time to avoid the pressure. McGowan is just really getting off the ball right now, Graham. Yeah, and they were going to take a big penalty here. It looks like 15, and I didn't see the signal. Maybe Mr. Ruiz will give it again here, and we'll get a chance of what we saw there. This is going to give the SCL another first down at about the 19. Looks like that might have been uh, roughing the passer. Indeed, that is the call. Well, the referees will certainly do their best. The man in the white hat always trying to protect the quarterback and make sure because he is more exposed. Um, 15 yards hurts, and that's really going to help extend this drive for him. I suppose that explains why Kelly was so happy. 8.59 in the first half. Kelly to throw. Picks up a nice block. Looking back across, but Dix intercepts it and steps into the end zone. This will come out to the 20. Enoch Dix with the biggest defensive play of the half as he intercepts Scott Kelly's pass in the end zone to turn back the SCL. And McGowan did a good job to fight back to the outside and make Kelly throw the ball. He hung it a little bit, and Dix came right over there and made the leaping grab really nice. Unfortunately, because his momentum was on the field when he caught it, and he continued going sideways, he was ruled that he could have turned up field. And so when he went into the end zone of bounds, he's gonna have, they're going to get the ball deep in the end zone. Here's Kelly. Look, he's going to hang that ball up there, and that's just too long for a great leaper like Dix. He is right there, eats that up. And there you can see he goes out of bounds. Okay, his motion, again, didn't allow him to, to go forward, so that's why it's not going to be a safety for taking it through the end zone and out. But they are going to have to take the ball deep there down on the two-yard line, and that's going to be a little bit hard for him. So the NBL does not catch a break on that call. They have it at the one-yard line. I thought his momentum had carried him into the end zone and out, and it should have been a touchback. Well, yeah, and it is a judgment call. I mean, I, you know, I think that uh, depending on how you see it, that, that, that's a reasonable call, too. But I guess the, uh, the back judge there, and, and there are five referees for this game, um, so Mr. Candelaria is right there in front of it, which the normal high school game doesn't have, though they have talked about doing that. Um, see if perhaps we can see that again. Great play by Dix, though. Just really shows his athletic ability to step in front of Walsh that time and take that ball away. Well, and explains why he's the Empire Athlete of the Year. Look at the height. You stretch up. There's your feet both down. He's got two. And really, his third step does keep him in. And then, unfortunately, I think, um, you know, for Enoch, it was a really good play. He was trying to get that touchback, and that's probably why he stepped out of bounds behind the flag there. The intended receiver was Elsie, not Walsh on that play. First and 10 now at the one for the NBL. This is going to be tight here. Caruso takes the handoff and gets out to perhaps the two. That's his fourth carry of the night so far. He has 28 yards rushing for the NBL. And the NBL's right up on the ball. They have two plays called here. They're going to get another one off. 
they don't want the good defense get set. Got to hope they don't mishandle this ball, though, here. They're going to have to really be careful. Pitch out to Shoemaker. He brings it out of the end zone, out to the nine-yard line. Well, I think the NBL can be happy there that the coaches agreed before the game not to have any blitzing because uh, a couple linebackers right up on an inexperienced quarterback down there on the one might have been a little shaky. Now the NBL does have a chance to get a first down and make things go the other way. SEL had a pretty good drive there. Here's a turning. And Shoemaker doesn't get the ball very often. It's lined up his tailback, actually, with the Santa Rosa High running mate Caruso. And he really runs hard and low there. Third and one for the NBL. A long one. Curtis in trouble. Goes down. So I think Keen is there. I think they try to uh, cross up the SCL with the shorter yardage, trying to go with the pass. And, and Curtis was looking out here on the right for the quick out. But if you're going to throw that, you got to set and throw. He didn't have time to wait. And then there was pretty good coverage out here on the left side. So since he didn't have the open receiver in his mind right away, but right there he's going to have to turn and throw. Looks back again, and it's just too late. Also in on the play was Dan Zamora out of Annaly. Here's a punt out of the end zone. Barrett will hit it quickly, and it goes off the side of his foot and kicks down and rolls out to the 20. Real tough break for the NBL as they again will have to defend deep in their own territory with seven minutes to go here in the half trailing 7-0 yeah i'm sure barrett's going to be disappointed i know it was in the end zone but uh he sure did want to get to that ball and kick a little better a 10-yard punt average is not going to be what he wants we'll take a quick break as the teams change possession what makes farmer glenn foods burger king different from others It seems everyone feels good about the community spirit at Farmer's Lane Food. We love this place! <laughs> 7 0 the score with 6.55 to go. The SCL takes over at the NBL's 20 yard line. They've been blessed with good field position throughout this first half, Graham. Yeah, well, and I think they really felt last time they were going to take the ball in for a touchdown. So they're very fortunate here to get the ball back after that short punt. They look fired up to go, and they're in the wishbone. First time tonight. Silva back at quarterback, gives to the second man through, and the football is loose. The NBL's all over it. I believe Jerome Arterbury has the football at the 20. There's a penalty marker down. Well, it looks like it's going to be the NBL's ball. Um, he basically, he just got stripped. It was a nice counterplay. Looked like it was going to go somewhere, but um, just got stripped of the ball. And uh, I think, yeah, those were, those were bean bags down on the ground there. Here we go. In the wishbone. Silva fakes inside. Coming back to Walsh in the counter. And he just... He didn't take the handoff very well, and the ball just came out. You know, the hand came in to hit it, and it came loose. Didn't make a nice pocket for that quarterback. So the NBL's defense comes up with a big play again. The handoff goes up the middle to Shoemaker, and he's out to the 25-yard line, a pickup of five yards. Well, yeah, I'd say, the, you know, in this kind of game, and especially for these players, as good as some of them are, fundamentals have been something they haven't emphasized they haven't been at practice for long only nine days trying to meet new people trying to learn new plays and your fundamentals just don't get emphasized but you've got to make a big pocket you've got to lift the center you've got to do all those little things which is really what makes football such a complex game and i think the mistakes we've seen so far are really examples of fundamental breakdowns Shoemaker, the lone back behind Curtis now on this second and five play. Curtis is going to throw it. He's got some pressure up the middle, and the throw is incomplete. Intended, I believe, for Robert Buckley out of Rancho Gatati, but it was thrown just a little bit high. Tim Gunderson was also in the general vicinity of that throw. It's going to be third and five. Yeah, I think the timing just didn't connect on that. I, Curtis thought they were going one way, and they looked like they were going somewhere else. He's back, he gets set, he's waiting, he's waiting, very good patience, and he thinks he's going to have somebody deep. And I just don't think Gunnarsson thought he was supposed to be going that far. 
think Curtis has shown a lot of courage here. He's playing hard and standing in there looking to throw the ball. And as Arterbury said, they'd run and pass. Curtis rolling, pitches it out high. This is a break for the SDL, scooped up by LeBlue. And LeBlue walks for a touchdown. Mike LeBlue out of Annaly picks up the fumble on the run and coasts 15 yards for the second Sonoma County League score of the night. Well, I don't feel bad for Chris Curtis there because, I mean, he's, he just basically made an error by trying too hard. Um, you know, he was starting to run. He could see he, was cut, he had the open man, but you can't throw a hospital pass like that out there. He's coming down the line. He's reading. He's looking. He can see there, and he feels the pressure caught. He sees the man. He tries to get it, but he's getting pulled down. And even if it had been um, connected there, Shoemaker would have been tapped for a loss for sure. And I, I think Chris Cruz just trying too hard to do too much, and that's just that's too bad. You see Mike LeBlue finishing off the play. Great hustle by Enix Dix to come back there and try to catch him just for the end there. He almost did, but uh, you know, LeBlue had all the momentum going for him there. That's a big turnover for the SL. Well, they did get their touchdown, albeit in a strange way. Gabe Aguilar came out initially with the tee and then walked back across. They're either going to let somebody else kick it or go for two right here. We'll have to wait and see what they come out of the huddle with. They did call a timeout. Five minutes and 32 seconds to go here in the half. Sonoma County lead leads it 13 to 0. I'd be surprised if they did go for two right here, other than maybe just a chance to get somebody else a chance to score. They are going to go for two. Coming out wide to the far side is Nick Solomon out of Casa. To the near side, it's John Leal. Silva rolling out. No, he gave it up the middle. Excuse me, fake me out. Well, that's a real good example of how well he rides the fullback. Chris Van Doren took the handoff and scores the two points. Yeah, good job there again by Sylvie. Puts the ball in. Van Dorn, a powerful back. So we'll take a break now with 5.32 to go in the half. The SCL up on top, 15-0 in the 21st Kiwanis All-Star Football Game. I used to spend days on the phone nailing down my insurance policies, but I finally simplified things. Rogers and Young handles it all. My business package, workers' compensation, employee benefits, everything my business needs. And everything I need for my sanity. Now I can focus on my golf game. <laughs> it needs it. Rogers and Young works with the Allied Group to bring you comprehensive business insurance. Rogers and Young and Allied, an unbeatable twosome. Trent Herzog out of Casa Grande is going to hit this ball. And a whistle blows. He may have had an offside against the Sonoma County League. I think so. He kind of uh, paused. And here's going to come our touchdown again. Unfortunately for the uh, NBL, it's the white team, the SL, that's going to score. He hangs on, he hangs on, he throws the pitch out there, and it just hangs up. It's well over his head. And again, you can see that he would have been tackled for a loss. You have three white players who would have been covering. Dick's making a great job coming back here, but... It's just not enough. That call actually went against the NBL, so Trent Herzog is going to get a chance to hit this one from the 45-yard line now. Yeah, one of the up linemen must have left the five-yard box before the ball was kicked. Johnson and Talton drop back deep. It's Talton at the five to the 20. Picks up a block from McGill and out to the 30, to the 40, and knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Herzog, the last man to beat, made the tackle on Talton as he tries to get his NBL teammates fired up. Yeah, and Jenkins and Talton, the Montgomery teammates, are certainly fired up, and Talton did almost break that. Great time to flip the cut back. He just barely missed getting around it. He's deep, he's set, he's got it. They set up some blocking, and he slips here. But then he's going to come out, and he's going to get around a beautiful block there, number 42, um, Aguilon. And there he goes, up the sideline. He picks up the extra man, and one left the kicker, and he just can't get the one step. Curtis back deep. He's got it. Curtis looking for a Gillen. A Gillen's out in front, has it at the 10. Touchdown, NBL. Big arm by Curtis. 
a 52-yard scoring strike to Kimoa Gillen. And the NBL is right back in the ball game. Well, that's an exciting offense. Well, like you said, Talton was fired up, Jenkins was fired up. And I think the rest of the NBL got fired up. Nobody comes out here to get embarrassed. Curtis getting back. He should be setting his feet, but he's got a lot of arm strength, and he hangs it up there. And Aguilon is just farther and behind. The safety just couldn't get over there in time, and the corner let him get behind him there. John Cook from Sonoma was beaten deep that time by, for the SCL. It's 15-6. The NBL will almost certainly go for two now that the SCL has 15 instead of just 14, and they will. Johnson and Caruso in the backfield. Hill and Dix are the receivers. Caruso takes it, and he's in. So just like that, two plays later, it's 15 to 8 SCL with 4.59 to go in the half, and we'll take a break. Don't go away. This should be an exciting finish. Sonoma County is truly a golfer's paradise, and now you can experience a dream come true with the Post Newsweek Cable ESPN Sonoma County Golf Fantasy. Imagine a free round of golf for four at one of Sonoma County's spectacular courses, like Fountain Grove, Bodega Harbor, Windsor Golf Club, Oakmont, Mountain Shadows, Adobe Creek, or Sonoma Golf Club. You'll arrive in style with limousine service provided by North Star. Sound like a fantasy? It could become a reality if you enter to win at Pacific Tire and Brake on Sebastopol Road. We make purchasing tires a positive experience. Holly's Paint Store on Santa Rosa Avenue, your truck and auto paint specialist. Bob Benson Acura on the Corby Auto Mall, engineered like no other Acura dealership. And Evan Phillips of Polly Polly and Madsen Realtors, a leading member of Sonoma County's home team. A perfect day of golf for four with limousine service. Sign up today and you could be this month's winner in the Post Newsweek Cable ESPN Sonoma County Golf Fan. The SCL takes over after the kickoff at their own 23-yard line. Adam Shoemaker with a big hit on Christian Walsh. And Barrett had a pretty good kickoff there. And I think the NBO really does feel they're back in the game, and now their defense is going to try to uh, maybe get a turnover and get some better field position. I'm sure they're feeling a whole lot better about their offense right now. Silva, the quarterback now for the SCL. Gives it to Hermsmeyer up the middle. He's out past the 25 to the 26, a pickup of three for the SCL. Well, I'm sure now the SCL is going to be looking both at the clock and the distance they have to go. They know they've got a, a good, solid running game. It's a Petaluma's um, wishbone sense. is more of a, a possession offense. And I'm sure they're going to try to blend that in and maybe throw a few passes, see what they can set up. Probably depend on what kind of coverages they can get. Statistically, the game is fairly even right now. The big plays have been the turnovers and, of course, the two long passes, one for a touchdown by the NBL, one to set up a touchdown for the SCL. The football's loose. The NBL has it at the 15. Jerome Arterbury takes the ball away from the SCL, and the NBL takes back over with great field position. Well, this is looking like the game two years ago. The SCL had 14-0, looking in control, and the NBL come roaring back. So this is a pretty good turn of events there. The only thing might have been a little better for the NBL if they had run it in, and that would have really tied it up. Well, they couldn't ask for a better field position here. Here it is again. Ball's just lost. Hermsmeyer just could not hold on to it, and that there it goes. And that's not the kind of mistakes you make, a fundamental error, and um, the NBL makes them pay. to lose another 10 back to Curtis is very strong. He didn't go down. That was that was pretty impressive. Penalty marker on the field. After the hit, a little bit of John going on. 
Oops, and it's going to be the NBL that's going to take it. There's Curtis slipping away, showing great strength. He gets out here, but then Van Dorn in the open field, and he takes him head on. Really good job there. Oh, and he's, he's definitely excited. That was a great tackle by Van Dorn. They're marching this one against the NBL, so their great field position just disappeared because of dead ball foul, too. So the play does count. They lost the 10 yards, and they lose it down. Now it's second and a whole long way to go. They spotted out the 36. 35-yard loss in that play. You need to get down to the three-yard line for a first down, so it's second and 34. Curtis to throw, looking deep again. Dix is out there, and he has it. Dix has it. They spot it at about the one-yard line. Great leaping catch. Holy smoke, we're seeing the stars come out tonight as Dix makes an incredible circus catch. Here it is again. Curtis hangs it up there. He's got space. Dix had him beat to the outside. If the ball had been outside, it would have been an easy touchdown. The ball ends. He corrected back in, made a leap over the safety cook, and what a heck of a play by Dix. It's a shame the ball wasn't thrown farther to the outside. It would have been an easy touchdown, and it's down here now on the one. So now the NBA has to show that they can show, score from a short distance. First and goal, Curtis keeps it. And he's going to be just short of the end zone. No, he's in. Touchdown, a late call. Curtis digging hard. He's in for the NBL second score. And I'm sure he feels good about that, having given the one score away to the SCL. That's a great touchdown for him to add, and he's made two big passes there with a little help from his receivers. Sonoma County head coach Dave Hargrove has got to be saying, what do we got to do here? We look like to be, we were in control of this just a couple of minutes ago. Now all of a sudden, the NBL is threatening to take the lead with this two-point conversion. It's tremendous swing back. The, they had the penalty and the sack. It looked like they had really resisted in another bomb doing in the SCL. Well, big plays in an all-star game are traditional, and that's what we've seen here so far. We're set for play now. Shoemaker and Johnson are the backs on this two-point conversion. Curtis gives it to Shoemaker. No, he keeps it. And he's in. And Curtis is very strong. He was met there outside of the line. He could have been stopped short. Tremendous strength there by Curtis. A great fake by Curtis as he gives the NBL their first lead of the night, 16-15, with 2.15 to go in the half. We'll be back with the kickoff after this message. Operating its three Santa Rosa Burger King restaurants with true school spirit. I love this place! Where you can get a free cheeseburger by getting an A on your report card. Where your school gets free IBM computer equipment through the Burgers 4 Bytes program. Stop by any of the three locally owned and operated Burger King restaurants for details. watching PNC Channel 3, a service of Post Newsweek Cable in Santa Rosa. Justin Elsie has just taken the kickoff for the Sonoma County League out to the 34-yard line. Scott Kelly comes back into the football game at quarterback for the SCL. And I think that means we might see a few passes here in the last couple of minutes. So the SCL at least wants to get down there and have the attempt at a field goal. I'm sure they felt they were, as you said earlier, in control of the game, and suddenly things have blown up in their face as um, Curtis has thrown the ball deep twice, and they've made a big turnover. 
Under two minutes to go now in the half. Kelly throwing for Freitas. He's got it at the 40. Gage rides him down at the 45. Pickup of about 11 yards and a first down. Tempers flaring just a little bit. Some good work there by the coaching staff to keep people down and the referees a little bit of control there too. Um, I'd say if this was a regular season game though, I think we would have seen some flags and I think we might have even seen some people leaving the game. One thirty-seven to go now in the half. The SCL is going to have to move fast to score here. That was their fifth first down of the ball game. Kelly in trouble. Artaberry has him. And he goes down back at the 35. Great job by the front line of the NBL. Good. Sully was there. McGowan was there. Along with Matt Ruiser. Yeah, they gave him no time whatsoever there. He was still going back when he had red shirts surrounding him up. Loss of seven on the play by Kelly. And a loss of a lot of time in the last two plays. I know they were trying to get out of bounds to play before. That didn't happen. Then they get sacked, and there's a lot of time. I mean, they had moved the ball upfield, and they were looking pretty solid there just over the midfield stripe. And again, with Aguilar's range, I mean, a 45-yard kick's not out of the question. Now they're going to need a couple big plays. It's amazing the amount of pressure we've seen put on the quarterbacks considering that they are not blitzing here tonight. Just bringing four or five guys at you straight up and uh, they're putting some pressure on. Well, I think um, particularly when a defensive player is pretty certain it's going to be a pass and the kind of lineman in this game, they can really pin their ears back and go hard and they're going to cause problems for anybody. Well, this is ideal conditions. I would wish the season to be like this out here or all the nights. This is just the greatest weather. Really is a beautiful evening here at Bailey Field. It was a little bit of a breeze earlier, but that has died out now that the sun has set. Perfect football conditions for this Kiwanis All-Star football game. And we've got uh, Elsie and Dix matched up again out here. We'll see if they challenge him or not. So now he's going to go the other way. Kelly dumps it to LeBlu at the 45. They'll get some of that yardage back as LeBlu makes a nice catch. Pick up of six. Clock's rolling. They're going to get right on the ball right away. They need to get this off and get a first down to stop the clock. Only 35 seconds to go now in the half. And that's hard to do with an inexperienced team together and a rushing and doing a hurry up offense. Kelly in a little bit of trouble. Penalty marker goes down. Kelly makes a nice pump fake and gets out past midfield to the 47 where McGowan takes him down. That was a superb fake. Man. Kelly showing a lot of patience, a lot of control there. Pick up about nine yards on the play by Kelly, but we'll wait and see what the penalty call is and if indeed that will be nullified. Yes, procedure against the SCL. Kelly's going back. He's looking deep. It's not there. Brings it back down, and now he's got a lot of pressure, and he gets away. That's a nice pickup there. Afraid us to do that. That flag was really late. I'm surprised that um, he didn't throw that a little uh, sooner. Great job from the backside there by McGowan. Real good hustle. McGowan seemingly all over the field here in the first half. It's going to be third and 12. Check that. Fourth down as they do not take the penalty. So go ahead and give Kelly the nine yard game and it's fourth down. They're gonna go for it. Without much time here. 12 seconds to go, 11, the clock ticking. Kelly's gonna have to hustle to get off this play. Perhaps the final play of the half. Williams putting pressure on Kelly and he's driven out of bounds. Nice tackle going. by Louis Godoy as Excuse me, that was Chris Barrett that made the tackle as the first half comes to an end. And what an exciting first half it was. The SEL 
out to a 15-0 lead. The NBL coming right back and taking a 16-15 lead as they head into the locker rooms here at Bailey Field. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with some halftime statistics in the start of the third quarter after this. yards for the NBL. We see the NBL as we get set to start the second half of play. And here are the team totals. First downs for the NBL 6, the SCL 5 total yards. The NBL 92 yards offensively. The Sonoma County League had 138 yards of offense in the first half. So we'll take a quick break. That's the story here at halftime. We'll be back with the kickoff in the start of the third quarter in just a moment. Of all the things to cherish in this world, the gift of life is our most precious gift. When we take things for granted, we lose sight of the things that really matter to us. Child abduction is a horrible reality. We can never be too careful while protecting our kids. A child can be abducted in a matter of seconds. To help prevent child abduction, please contact the Poly Class Foundation at 1-800-587-HELP and help protect our children. Here you see a beautiful crowd at Bailey Field enjoying a summer evening of football here in Santa Rosa. And that's got to make the Kiwanis Club happy. Graham, this money goes to support local charities. So really nice to see the turnout here. Yeah, I think um, one thing you can be really happy about with the Kiwanis, they're involved with a lot of things, rebuilding the K-Land out at Howarth Park. Um, children are their emphasis. Um, Shots for Tots, one of their programs. They built a playground at Los Gilicos this last year. They do scholarships for some of the students actually playing in this game could be the recipients of them. So uh, I think you can say the Kiwanis have put the 21 years they put the money into this game to a good use. Sonoma County League will start off with the football here in the second half, and it was a real momentum swing about the middle of that second quarter that gave the NBL the, the lead back. So we'll see if the SCL can regain uh, some of their poise and composure that was causing them to really uh, take it to the NBL in the first quarter. Well, like you said, I think uh, big plays are the one thing that we saw, but also big turnovers. And the turnovers for the SCL came early, the turnovers for the NBL came later, and the points followed for both of them in that sense. Dropping back deep, deep, Justin Elsie for the Sonoma County League, along with Freitas, Sean Freitas, that is. Both those guys have been very active in the first half. Chris Barrett will kick it off for the NBL. Well, I don't know what kind of fiery speeches they had at halftime, but I think it's probably more of a concern of who's all going to get in the game and what we're going to do a little different and try to remind them of a few things that they could do a little bit better. Chris Curtis for the NBL. First four passes were incomplete as we see the kickoff by Barrett. Head for the right side, picked up by Kevin Fritch, and he comes down at the 15 yard. Chris Curtis says those missions. He started off 0 for 4, but came back and completed two big passes in the in the second quarter. So he's got to be uh, feeling a little bit more confident as he starts this second half of play. I think so. I mean, for somebody who hadn't played much, he showed a lot of growth and, and just a lot of courage. Actually, I mean, the one play he made the mistake, and he's trying to do too much. But his bravery to stand there and throw those long passes up really gave the NBL what they needed. So the SEL will start off at their own 17-yard line. As you see the kickoff again, heading for Fritch. Bumped into his own man, and there's Joey Easton with the big pop. He's known for his hitting. That's for sure. Another good defensive play for the NBL on first down. No gain for the SCL. Well, I think the NBL was probably surprised to find themselves with the lead suddenly, and they really did respond to that when they were down 15-0. They came back and played a lot more fired up, and they're still showing that they're ready to do the same this half. Loss of three on that first down play. SCL going in the wrong direction here. Cheeks on the tackle out of Rancho Cotati High School. Silva's still in at the quarterback, but Aguilar's warming up on the sideline too, so maybe the next series we'll see um, him play some at the quarterback spot. 
Silva to throw, looking deep. And it is batted down by Gage. A marker goes down, and it looks like they're pointing towards the SCL receiver. That's Tony Rosati out of Petaluma, so the call may go against him as he might have grabbed Gage from behind. Yeah, the back judge made that call on Finn. He threw that flag a long way, but with some really definite purpose. Here you see Scott Gage, the defensive back, one of the top defenders in the North Bay League a year ago. Great all-around athlete. And That's the SCL is moving school. back. They're going to put them in a bigger hole. And that's something the NBA really didn't have a whole lot of until the end. Well, here's Silva going back. He's looking. He doesn't get as much on this, I'm sure, as he meant to. And the ball's hanging up there. And what we can see there is he just reaches up there, number eight, and grabs onto the defender. And, well, that's what we see. Silva keeps it on the option, breaks a couple tackles. He's in the open field, out past the 30 to the 35-yard line. A great run of 30 yards and a first down for Silva. The Sonoma County League is on the march. Well, and that shows why he's an all-league player, tremendous speed and for a couple years that he ran the offense. Did a great job. Look at him read. He's looking. He sees the gap, and he just turns the field. And then the cutback with the confidence breaks away, just runs by people here. Tucks the ball in, hangs on, and is ridden down by Dix. Wishbone here. Seven first downs now for the SCL. Nothing doing on this first down play. Actually, Hermsmeyer did pick up a couple of yards that time out to the 40-yard line. I thought he was dropped in the pile, but he squirts through and manages to get four for the SCL on first down. Well, when you have a running quarterback like Silva, defenders start to look for him to keep the ball. When he rides the fullback that long and keeps it in there, they often don't make the kind of hit that they need to on the fullback. To stop a wishbone, you've got to play the fullback play where you have to hit the fullback. You've got to hit him hard. And there he slips through. Just because he doesn't have it at other times, he take a fullback play can hurt you badly. Look at the great feet there, and he keeps going, and then is driven forward, actually, in the tackle for the last couple yards. Second down, Silva to throw, looking for Elsie. Elsie covered by Dix, and Elsie takes it away. Two great athletes going at it. Elsie wins the battle this time with a 29-yard pickup and a first down. Well, and Elsie, the shorter man there, um, won the jump ball against the basketball player Dix. That's kind of a surprising. That doesn't happen very often. Silva hangs this up high. I'm really surprised there because, I mean, this is the kind of ball that a defender like Dix would eat up, but he didn't really get a chance set. Elsie fights back through and just pulls it down away. And actually, I think he got away there pulling his face mask. Pretty obvious, I thought, but maybe the back didn't see that. Lucky break for the NBL. SCL at the 31 now. Hermsmeyer up the middle. And he picks up a couple of more yards. Pretty good job on the defensive side there for the NBL. Barrett was involved in the play. Take a look at the tail end of this play again, and perhaps a penalty that was missed. Tough to see from the positioning there by the back judge, however. Well, you see he's gone hold it there, and unfortunately, he didn't let go as soon as he I don't know that he tried to do it intentionally. I think when he jumped up, he grabbed the round object, which was his head, and he did try to let go, which is fortunate, because that can be dangerous. Second and six, Silva pitches to Freitas. Freitas gets to the 19-yard line. Dix pushes him out of bounds, but it's a first down at the 19 after a pickup of eight. And Freitas is speedy. He's been running that... You know, every play, he's going in the motion. He's moving. That's a tiring thing. And there he gets outside. McGowan has to take the quarterback. Some respect there for Silva. Nice crackback block there. And he's out in open space. And Dix is the only man. He faces him up nicely. He's able to have the strength to reach out and drag him down. Nine first downs now for the SCL. First time we've seen a ball control type drive for either team tonight. Hermsmeyer up the middle. And this time, Elsie, Elsie, McGowan jumps up. Kept the ball that time. 
and Silva is dropped for a loss of four yards. Great defensive play again. Well, the quarterback's McGowan's man, and that time he filled it right away. He didn't try to sweat him, didn't try to make him work it. He came right away. There he is, right in his face, and he'd reach up, and notice, too, that not only that, he wrapped up the arms so that Silva wasn't able to pitch it out to Freitas, who had already gotten outside. Second and 14 now for the SCL as Silva loses four. 7-12 to go here in the third quarter. And the NBL is keeping Dix on Elsie. They're running the option. Silva on the option. Gets back to the 19-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Tackle by Jerome Arterbury with some help from McGowan again. So Silva gets the four he lost back, and it'll be third and 10. And they've run a couple weak side plays here. I think that they uh, may feel they've got a little bit more room trying to spread the field out. A lot of bodies inside, though, and just not enough space to get anything where they want to go. And Silva, who takes a lot of hits in as a running quarterback, tough player. Officials time out here. Looks like we have an equipment change. And maybe a little advice on playing the game and not talking it. So big third down play here now for the SCLs. They've marched all the way from their own 15. Silva keeps it. And he's going to be well short of the first down. Actually loses a yard on the play. It looks like they tried to run a quarterback draw there, and there just was no room in the middle. Filled up right away by red shirts. They just couldn't get people out of the way. Doug Vanderpool there making a, the tackle. Doug Vanderpool out of Montgomery High School, certainly one of the top defensive players in the North Bay League a year ago. And here's another look at that play. My understanding is he will be at the JC playing next year, as will a host of these other players. Aguilar is going to try a field goal now. It's a 38-yard attempt that would give the SCL the lead. And it is not going to get there. Taken in the end zone by Easton. It'll come out to the 20. Well, on the other one, he attempted, I think, to get the distance, and he maybe hit a little too straight. But with the hash, he tried to fade that one over, and he just didn't get enough on it to let it carry over, which is too bad. I mean, he thought with that kind of distance, he could be able to touch it in, but just didn't carry. So the NBL defense digs in when they have to again. And the SCL comes up empty. The NBL still leads this football game with 5.28 to go in the third, 16 to 15. There you see it. A tremendous possession drive there by the SCL. Curtis hit hard from behind and dropped for a loss. And fortunate to be holding on to the ball. Tackle made by Kevin Frisch from Petaluma High School as he came in from the right defensive end position and nailed him. Yeah, I think Curtis, there, fortunately, he pulled that in. He, he, I think he could feel something coming, and he knew it wasn't good. He's sitting back there looking at the pass, and you can see the ball's out there. He feels it and then closes it in as he runs into his own player slightly. And Fritch was right on him. Yeah, six and a half minutes the SCL had that ball, and that's a long time. Spread formation, four receivers, but the give is up the middle. And not much yardage there as the SCL digs in. Nick Solomon, the first man on the scene, as Shoemaker took the handoff and got nothing for the NBL. Yeah, lots of a white wall there that he ran into then. They tried, as you said, to spread field out a bit and make some running room, but they couldn't move anybody off the ball. I think the SCL uh, lineman maybe uh, held uh, a little bit lower than the NBL. It certainly matched up their counterparts very well tonight. Curtis swings it out, complete. Not much there, however. Certainly not enough for the first down. Yeah, Van Dorn made certain of that. He came right over there from the linebacker spot and filled it in after Freitas got a first hit on him, but he bounced off Van Dorn with a good fill, and he does not miss. Robert Buckley Quick with little the catch pass. that time. Looked like Numa Field, and he was by Freitas, but Van Dorn again with the big hit in open field. To punt, Chris Barrett 
Elsie drops back near the 45. Good kick. Fair catch called for by Elsie at the 46, and that's where the SCL will take back over here with 3.29 to go in the third quarter, and they trail it by a point. Well, I'm sure Barrett feels a lot better about that. I know those other two punts probably bothered him a bit, but he showed good patience. Again, the snap a little high, but he put a nice kick up there, enough that forced Elsie, a very dangerous returner, into the fair catch, which I think was a good choice. That ball would have hit and rolled for a while. Had a lot of red shirts coming down underneath it. Well, they only had the ball about two minutes, and here's the SCL with the ball again, who had it for the first six and a half minutes and went a long way, but could not get a score out of it. Again, a possession drive is uh, particularly difficult in these kind of games. So the SCL takes over at their own 46. Silva still at the helm. I'm not sure what the referee's discussion is, but it's kind of preseason for them, and I'm sure that they've figured out what's going on and making sure that they've got everything checked out right. Don't want to rush things too much. Mr. Ruiz has blown it in, and here we go. SCL goes back to the wishbone, and the give is to the second back through. Nothing there. The NBL front line has done a great job tonight. This play, no exception. Chris Barrett is there, along with some help from Matt Reeser from Cardinal Newman. Yeah, I think most of the SCL's success so far has been on the outside. They've had some, no luck running inside there. Limping off there, we've got number 44, Kevin Fritchie of Petaluma, who's been playing an outstanding game and needs a little help on that ankle, I think. SCL trying to mix things up with the bone here. Pitch out goes to Freitas. A Gillen takes him down after a gain of two at the 49-yard line. A Gillen closed that distance down in a hurry that time as it looked like Freitas might get a chance to turn the corner. It's going to be third and seven now for the SCL. There he is riding it in there. Look how long he holds it. And then he makes his pitch out. Hermsmeyer running it up. A great job of the fullback. And Aguilon is lucky here not to get a clothesline call. He's just, just on the shoulder pad. The Sonoma County League with the football here. Third and seven at their own 49. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. There has been no scoring in this quarter. Silva to throw, dumps it up and over the middle. A Gillen on defense against Rosati, and the ball falls incomplete. Both players going for the football. However, there was a little bit of contact. Yeah, and I'm sure that they would see that as an incidental reaching for the ball, the legs uh, running into each other. I think that was a good call there. Um, not to uh, throw a flag. Tom Silva on his way to Princeton. Great student as well as an athlete. You've got to be to end up at a school of that caliber. <laughs> Aguilar to kick it, and it's a good high kick. A Gillen takes it at the 16. Cuts to the outside of the 20, 25, 30. Out to the 35. Breaks the tackle there to the 40. Vanderpool out in front of him at the 50, gets a block from Talton, cuts back in at the 30, and finally goes down. That was a superb, superb play by Aguilar. Tremendous. A 53-yard punt return for Kimo Aguilar. And the NBL has great field position. Well, and, and though he got some nice blocks, I'm surprised to actually feel this punt. Aguilar hung a really nice one here. That ball is up in the air. He's got two guys bearing down on him, and he's waiting, and he knows he can get hit, and then he just steps outside. Tremendous sight, and look at the distance. He's not just runs the 55 forward. He's running back and forth across the field here, picking his feet up and going by people. And that's a great athlete. Freitas finally brought him down. Curtis to throw. Complete to Buckley. Buckley has a first down at the 16. However, there are penalty markers down. And that's kind of unfortunate because that's the kind of play that I think the NBL was hoping that, you know, they'd be able to set up for Curtis. A quick, 
in. He got the ball set right quick, and uh, they seem to run a really nice one off there. Maybe it's against the SCO. They're taking the red captain, Dan Joseph, Cardinal Newman, and giving him his options. And it looks like he's going to take the penalty. So it must have been a 15-yarder, which will give the North Bay League a first down at the 15. Their seventh first down of the ball game. So the NBL can add to their lead right here as they drive it down to the 15 and after that, a great punt return and a penalty. 107 to go. Unfortunately, a personal foul there, 15 yards helping the NBL out. That's too bad in a game like this. NBL sticking with the spread formation. Johnson behind Curtis, and he has drawn the SCL offside. Mixed up his cadence that time. And he got two or three guys on the encroachment call. Yeah, White was looking very jumpy there. Here he is. He's calling his signals. And he, as Dave said, changing the cadence. Really solid there by the red lineman to stay in spot. And here they go again, only five yards away from first down. Curtis pitches to Johnson. Johnson cuts inside near the five yard line. And it will be a first down for the NBL. Nice pitch by Curtis, and that's the difficult pitch, the one to the left side. Um, if you're not a left hander, that's a difficult pitch to do. And he pushed off a nice one there. Johnson, an explosive back, heading right upfield and gets that first down. So the NBL with a first and goal. That's first down number eight for the North Bay League. And the clock ticking down here in the quarter, just 30 seconds to go. And you'll be able to see Johnson on this field again this year. He'll be playing for the junior college. JC did start practice this week, so some of these players have gotten a little extra time. Two teams. Shoemaker up the middle, digging hard, and he will get down to about the two-yard line. So it will be second and goal. It's actually a little closer than that. They spot it at about the one. Pretty good push by the NBL lineman on that play. They're going to come down now to the other end and hope they can push it through. So no scoring in the third quarter as we've put three quarters of play in the books here at Bailey Field in the 21st Kiwanis All-Star football game. We'll turn the page and head for the fourth quarter after this timeout. What makes Farmer Glen Foods Burger King different from others? Oh, that was this place! Boom! You helped us raise over $15,000 in two years for local school. Got a good report card? Bring it, we'll give you a free cheeseburger. Car wash fundraiser? Let us host your group's next event. It seems everyone feels good about the community spirit at Farmer Glen Foods. We love this place! Sixteen to fifteen as we head for the fourth quarter, a one-point lead for the North Bay League. If you'd like a VHS copy of this or any of our Game of the Week telecasts, simply mail or drop off a blank VHS tape and thirty dollars to Post Newsweek Cable 3242 Airway Drive, Santa Rosa 95403. Please specify the game or games you'd like. Second and two. SCL's got to be disappointed in that quarter. They dominated all the play, but then the big punt return, and here's the NBL knocking on the door again. Curtis swings it out to Johnson. Johnson trying to get to the corner, and he does. Touchdown, NBL. And that was an aggressive play call there with the short distance and the people putting the pressure on. That took a lot of guts to have a guy like Curtis with less experience take that snap and fire out the quick little pass. Johnson with a great effort making the leap in. That was a bold play. So the NBL up by seven. This will be an important extra point right here. 
as they can make it a nine-point lead with a two-point conversion. Yeah, they would like to be two scores ahead. That's going to put the SCL under a great deal of pressure. Johnson and Shoemaker in the eye formation now for the NBLs. They look for two. Johnson on the dive, and he's in. And he just powered himself through. A great run by Johnson. It's now 24-15 NBL with 11.55 to go. We're going to take a look at the touchdown one more time. The NBL has really used the big place to their advantage. This and Curtis, this drive, no exception. right on the line, throws out the quick pass. Johnson picks up his defenders. He looks, and now he turns, commits, and look at the hurdle. Defender put his head down, and he was gone. One thing we haven't talked much about is the fact that although this is just an all-star game, a game that really means nothing one way or the other, it's for bragging rights between these two leagues, and you can tell that these guys want to win this football game. That's true. And for some of these players, too, about 20 altogether, they are getting ready to play a more competitive level of football next year. And so this is a great chance for them to get a, a jump on that. And another factor to throw into the mix is the fact that for some of these guys, it may be the last football game they ever play, the last time they put on the pads. So they're putting a little bit of heart and effort into this game and putting on a great show for the crowd here at Bailey Field. Barrett hits it short, taken by John Leal. And he gets out to the 32-yard line. Taken down by Joe Easton with a little help from Louis Godoy. I think uh, another point, David, to follow on what you're saying is good, too. It's great to see these people who have been to different schools. Sometimes in high school, people promote the rivalries to the extreme. But you can see the camaraderie. And these players know each other. They've played against each other, um, both NBL and SCL, as far as individual schools. And like on the last um, two-point conversion there, Johnson, running off the field over Jenkins, the first guy, the Montgomery player, to congratulate him. Johnson, the Newman player. Those guys know each other. They know each other a lot farther back than high school. And there's a lot of enthusiasm to real enjoy the friendship that's in such a game like this. Eleven twenty-three. as you can see in your right corner, Freitas takes it and is hit at the line of scrimmage. Vanderpool, McGowan, and company and Kelly's back in there at the quarterback slot. Again, the SCL looking dominant in the third quarter, playing with a great deal of control and ending up with no points out of it. Doug Vanderpool, one of the most emotional players you see, and he uses that emotion to his advantage. He is a tough physical player. Look at the nice countering there. Freitas coming back in, but there's just no room to go. He's got red shirts all around him. Kelly with a quick pass to Elsie, but it's behind him. And McGowan almost got his hand on that. Nice leap. Third down and 10 now for the Sonoma County League. You can tell they look a little bit frustrated right now. Yeah, I agree. They seem to be pushing a little bit. And, and really, I mean, they, they do need, okay, the nine points, but they can kick a field goal. They only need those scores, and they need to be a little patient and do the things that have been really successful for them here. That time, I think that's the NBL coming over before anybody in white moved. Both sides did jump a little bit. We'll see who the call goes against. Could be an important five yards. And it's going to go against the SCL. The right tackle jumped John Cooper from Petaluma. However, it looked like the NBL may have crossed the line first. Yeah, we really can't tell. The, the rule, though, that we need to know here is that you cannot break the, z the zone, the plane of the tip of the ball through the defender. But you can move your defender if you're behind the ball. And if, as a defender, you start moving forward and that causes an offense player to pick up or to move, then the foul will be on the offense, even though you could claim that they made you move. But you, as the offense player, have got to sit still. Um, and as long as they don't go into the zone, they can jump all they want. It takes a lot of uh, control and concentration for an offensive lineman. Third and 15 now. Kelly. Oh, and the big rush. Stepping up. Vanderpool has him. 
and drops him at the 30. It is a pickup of five yards, but it's going to be fourth down, and the SEL will have to kick. And McGowan with the early pressure there, forcing him to step up, and then Vanderpool, the Montgomery teammate, finishing it off. They just can't find anybody to block these two guys. Here goes Kelly. He's back, and there's Freitas coming right back at him. So he's got to move forward, and there we've got pressure and pressure and pressure. And Reeser just misses him, and Vanderpool finishes it off. Getting pressure all along the line there from the NBL. Emo Aguilan will drop back deep. His punt return, the biggest play of the second half, if not the whole football game. This time the kick goes off the side of Aguilar's foot and bounces out of bounds at the 43. He won't give Aguilan any kind of a chance to run this one back. Yeah, you could see there he turned to the right, and he was definitely kicking for the sideline and away. And maybe rightly so. I thought he made an outstanding punt last time. He hung the ball well. The coverage looked like it was pretty good. Two guys on it. Nagler a little bit unhappy because he's usually much better at putting the ball down on the sideline. Notice here he turns to the right, get the sideline, and it just sails off. Caught the side of his foot. So with 9.42 to go, the NBL perhaps can ice it with a drive right here, starting at their own 42-yard line. Johnson right side to the 45 taken down by Mike Turner from Petaluma. Now certainly, given what the NBL can do best, you'd expect them to run the ball here, and yet some of those pass plays that Coach Arterbury talked about before that he was going to try to do have been successful. I'm curious to see if he does go to the air within this drive. I know they'd like to tune the t chew the clock up, but they have had some success with some passing, and Curtis has done a very good job. Nine-point lead for the NBL with 9.08 to go. Curtis gives it to Johnson again, and he gets near midfield to pick up a five more yards. Johnson's showing that, although he's a smaller back, he's very strong and quick. Tremendous strength. Tremendous strength he has, and he took a couple hits there and got the extra yards beyond. going to be third and five now for the NBL. If you're in the SEL shoes right here, you really need to hold right here and give your offense a chance to get the ball back because, again, they do need two scores. Jenkins is back in for Johnson. See if it's his turn to run the ball. Shoemaker is the fullback. Gunderson out wide to the near side. Dix to the far side. Curtis pitches it's to reverse. Jenkins. It's a reverse to Dix, and he's got some room out here. Can he pick up a block? He gets one. But a nice recover by Justin Elsie, and it, the play actually loses the yard. Penalty markers fly now. Dix having some words with Noah Shura. Freitas and Godoy also talking a little bit. This will be an interesting call. Yeah, well, the uh, reverse was a, was a challenging call and a, a good call. It seemed like it might work, but the uh, blocker got pushed over, and Dix kind of waited too long to turn up field. And Elsie has great speed, and the rest of the SCL got over there and covered it up fast. He missed his chance to get upfield. They're going to look at a penalty, too. And these penalties go... What I can see there is there are dead ball calls, and it looked like two against the NBL and one against the SCL, so... Not your typical offsetting, nothing happening, but they're both dead balls. Here it is, flicked out. Dix gets the ball, and it's looking pretty good right here. He's got people in front. He needs the lead block. Jenkins headed away. And here we can see that we got one SEL defender taking out the two blockers, and Elsie just has great speed. And we nearly had a knee injury on a coach there. Coach really Williams rolled underneath. Coach definitely took the worst of that exchange. It's a dangerous sideline. It's always hard to keep people back. So it looks like the SCL will turn down the penalties. And I'm not sure how all that works out since there was two against the NBL, one against the SCL. But what we're going to have is a punt here. So the SCL will get the ball back with time to come back in this football game. Chris Barrett will hit it at about his own 35-yard line. Justin Elsie drops back deep for the Sonoma County League. Well, dead ball fouls are really unfortunate in a game like this. Some of those emotions um, are, are probably not being channeled the right way. It should be a more positive thing than that. Maybe too much talk. Barrett with a low kick. 
hits at the 25 and goes out of bounds at the 20. That works out very nicely for the NBL. With 8.07 to go, the SCL will take over deep in their own territory, needing two scores here with enough time, but uh, a very tough battle here because the NBL front line has made it so tough on the SCL to get any time to throw the football in this half. They did chew up a little bit time on the clock. Well, the NBL is going to get reset here and see what they've got. And here comes uh, the SCL out of their offense, and they're ready to go. They need to move the ball here soon. Players counting players. Looks a little confusion. There's going to be a timeout by the NBL. Realize that they just don't have who they need on the field. And maybe they have too many. So we'll take a break now with 8.07 to go. It's 24-15. The NBL leads it. We'll be right back. Newsweek Cable invites you to support Schools Plus by playing in the Schools Plus Post Newsweek Cable Golf Tournament September 22nd at the Windsor Golf Club. The tournament features a scramble format with contest prizes, and you can even win a car from Zuma Magrini with a hole-in-one. Plus, enjoy a great barbecue dinner right after the action. Reservations are limited, so sign up now to join the fun and help Schools Plus. For information, call 528-5454. And remember, the Nike Sonoma County Open just one week later, where you can come out and watch future PGA stars and support Schools Plus. here at 24-15, well into this fourth quarter, and the North Bay League is winning this football game. The SCL, however, has the football, first and 10 at their own 20. And they do need a score on this drive. Kelly to throw, LC has it at the 30 to the 37 yard line. Nice slant and another first down for the SCL, their 10th of the ball game, pick up of 16 yards on the play. That's Elsie's third reception of the night. She approaches the 100-yard receiving mark. That was a good quick toss. Kelly drops back. Boom. Right there. Elsie cutting in, and he's right between the zone. Doug Vanderpool is back on defense that time and made the tackle. Not normally where you'd see him. Kelly with a little bit of confusion. Now it looks like he might try and throw the football. He's at the 40 to the 45, and he's got another first down at the 50. Vanderpool again on the tackle. That was a big first down, and there were a lot of great blocks that he picked up there um, as the NBL kept putting people on there, I and mean, they were getting blocked to block. That was a good, some good play there by all the players involved. V Doug Vanderpool, he's got stuff hanging out of his jersey and he is looking like he's played a couple of football games tonight and he's got to come off the field now to patch things back up again well here's kelly running around and he looks one way he goes back red shirts adjust and then he comes back in mcgowan's going to get blocked here and just takes a hit right by kelly he goes he pushes off one and vanderbilt is going to arrive here and he makes the big hustle and play. I'm sure that was a little bit tiring for him. First down, SCL. 11 first downs now for the Sonoma County League. They're at midfield. Pass back to Freitas. This is a running play, and it picks up six yards to the 44-yard line. Interesting play. Yeah, they uh, really try to throw those, those quick things out and try to spread the field and get Freitas the ball in space. Um, Danger is if they don't quite get it to him, he's going to slow him down. But Kelly's giving him a little flick, and it's gone. Freitas is a hard back. Arterberry, Burke, great job filling the holes. So the SCL is on the move, second and four. 6.34 to go here in the football game. Same play. Freitas takes it and has the first. marker down back at the 35 however yeah. Kelly took a big hit after the pass that one was actually thrown forward and was a pass play will it count no there's a clip and this one's gonna come back Elsie led him a little nice space there and they were 
kind of caught between covering him and covering Freitas. And Freitas, though, showed why he's such an outstanding back. The great quick speed, the burst by players, and then the tightrope down the sidelines. It's a shame for him that that play didn't count. Clip, of course, is from the spot of the infraction, and that was the 35. So you're going to see a second down here, and it's going to only be second and 10, basically, because of the downfield clip. Um, you know, an unfortunate thing, but basically the rule is very clear. You can't block below the waist. You can't block from behind. Either one, very dangerous to the player. So it was a 15-yard gain, and then the 15-yard penalty. 6.23 to go. Kelly looking deep for Elsie. He's got about a half a step on Dix, but that's not enough as the ball is thrown wide and out of bounds. It'll be third and 10. Yeah, especially as you say, not enough because Dix has the height over Elsie. He kept good inside position and he ran with them. That, that, that kind of ball is going to have to be um, hung up where Elsie can run to it. And that means he's going to have to get further behind him. Kelly is now five of 10 for 57 yards passing for the Sonoma County League. I would say that it's going to be very hard to throw the ball by Dix as a corner on the outside, that they're going to have to run Elsie into the middle and try to catch him on um, a posting pad or something. I, I think the sideline is going to be a real difficult thing. At this point, they know they need the touchdown. He's going to play him a little deeper. No time. flushing him out. Now throwing back across the other way, and a Gillen almost picks it off. It'll be fourth down. Interesting decision coming up here for the SCL. Yeah, for a moment there, it looked like he had triple going underneath, but uh, Kimo went up there and he nearly pulled that down. You almost have to go for this, needing the two scores, and it looks like that will be the decision for the SCL. Yeah, I agree. They, they, they can't kick the ball away here now, and they only need 10 yards. I mean, they, they've got the good quarterback to that, but I would say they're going to have to have a play that's designed to get at least 12 here to make sure that they have the 10. Great pressure on the last series there by the NBL. Got three receivers stacked out here on the right. Quite a flood. There's Elsie in the middle. Kelly throws it low and incomplete. The NBL will take over for the chance to try and run this clock down far enough to give the SCL no chance to come back. The season, the series, not the season series, but the overall series is one and one. The NBL won the first contest, 19-14. The SCL won last year, 14-6. So a win here tonight for the NBL will give them a 2-1 series edge. And, and interesting because uh, in head-to-head -head battles last year, the SCL had a little bit of an advantage over the NBL high schools last year. There's no doubt that the, the greater talent was seen to be in the SCL, and they were the stronger teams. So uh, maybe the NBL is trying to get a little bit back with this tonight. NBL still using Gleason as a tight end. Curtis rolling out, keeps it, gets to the 45 to the 43 yard line. But one thing the NBL cannot afford here is a turnover, and Curtis made a very good decision not to try and pitch that ball in traffic, but just hang on and pick up some yardage. That's true, and yet he's going to have to make sure he doesn't hold the ball out in front of him too much there while he's trying to run with it, or somebody's going to reach in, punch it away, grab it away from him. Nice, good patience here. He's looking down the line, looking to see what he's got. He sees the player commit to the outside, and he cuts it up inside, picks up a few blocks, and he gets the eight yards. Second down, the football is loose, but I believe the NBL got it back. Very alertly, Jason Cheeks at Arancho Katati picked up that loose ball, and it actually is a gain of two for the NBL. Yeah, they were fortunate there, because the SCL is running out of time right now. With that need for two scores, those three two-point conversions that the NBL made, that nine points is looking bigger and bigger. Third and three, five minutes to go. Curtis to Jenkins, and he'll be short of the first down. The SCL converges, and it's fourth and one. Jenkins did pick up a couple of yards that time. Well, SCL has got to get that ball loose again. I, I know that they were, you know, they feel like here they're just running out of the time and the opportunity. 
Leal was in on the tackle that time. It looks like the NBL is going to choose to punt this away. Chris Barrett will kick it. Elsie drops back. Surprised he didn't get more of a rush on him. Barrett gets a beautiful kick this time. Elsie takes it at the one, but steps into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. He wanted to run that thing out of there. The SEL will have to take it at the 20. Just 4.02 to go now in the football game. Well, and it's a long way to go, 80 yards, and they're going to need to have a little bit more creativity. There's the high punt. Elsie settles under, and he tries to reach it back in, but he just can't keep it in. Now, it's, in that case, what the rule was is that the ball was kicked into the end zone, that it broke the plane, not that he stepped back with the ball. Now, you could see him reach up high for it and try to grab it before it could go in. Gabe Aguilar will now come in at quarterback for the Sonoma County League out of Hillsburg High School. The first time we've seen him at the helm tonight. He's got a big arm. Rolls right. Come on, Gabe. Come on. Keeps it and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Artaberry in on the tackle along with Dan Weising at a Rancho Katati. First time we've called his number tonight. Uh, there's just the hard thing. Aguilar had some time. He ran a night just boot and looked and looked, but there's nobody open. The NBL's. Uh, backed off a little bit the uh, the safeties are loosened up there they're not giving up anything behind them and I think the SEL's only chance is a throw underneath right there Arterbury doesn't commit he keeps on his feet and he's there and Weissing helps finish it Nick Mineris is in at wide receiver for the SEL the football is loose however as Aguilar had trouble with the snap but he did recover it after a loss of two. There's that quarterback center difficulty. And again, we saw it earlier in the game, and that's that's a, a classic problem for these kind of games. See what happens. I think his hands maybe drop just a little bit. Different center than he's used to, and the ball ends up quickly on the ground. You know, they can't afford to lose that. Now it's third down instead of second. does come down it would have been a first down but I think this is going to come back I mean he, he they had third and 11 and it looked to me that he was clearly over the 20 yard line he was looking for Trippo his uh, Hillsburg High School uh, teammate one of his favorite targets during the year and it took him a long time to get there and he just didn't see the line maybe as well but I, I thought he was definitely over See if we could pick it up on the replay. We'll see Aguilar move to the outside. Now Triple's dragging back across, and he actually gets popped coming across the middle and gets lost. And he's trying to stop, trying to hold his feet, but still looking, and he, and he just goes too far. He's definitely on, on the line there, and the, um, he was set up short of the line originally. Line of scrimmage was the 19, and he was definitely at in about the 20 when he let go of that football. So a tough break again for the SCL with just 2.29 to go. And it is a loss of down on that penalty, so it's going to be fourth down now. Yeah, the five yards doesn't hurt as much as that down is, and that's uh, this is really their last gasp. So the NBL can seal the victory right here on defense as Aguilar facing the fourth and 14. And penalty markers go down. McGowan came in late, and now a penalty and that's flag a falling against the NBL. Tempers flaring again. And I think the McGowan just got himself 15-yard personal foul, probably a dead ball. And that really, depending on what the first penalty is, could be a first down. See what the first one is. We have offsides on the defense and a personal foul. That's going to be first down, and NCL has a little new life. So there's Aguilar standing there, and he doesn't appreciate that hit or the push. And it's not just the hand, it's the leg there, too. And that flag is very definite. So we'll see if this take a look again here see the battle going on it actually looks like 
I think that um, McGowan came with his hands and his leg there, and he made contact with the quarterback. Um, the ball had definitely been blown dead, so, you know, you, you just kind of got to get out of the way. But sometimes uh, maybe image is everything. Arnie Cuck was the offensive lineman that time who was battling with McGowan, and he sort of gave a little bit of momentum to McGowan. McGowan definitely finished it off. It does give enough yardage for a first down for the SCL, so they're not dead yet at the 36-yard line here with under two minutes to go. There's the big arm. will air it out for Elsie. Double coverage, however. And Elsie does a good job of batting it down. Easton and Aguilon were back there. And defensively, I think that's a pretty good assignment to have two people on Elsie. He will make that single play. But you can see example there of um, the arm that Gabe's got. He can really get the ball up there. That ball was at least 40 yards in the air that time. Here it is again. Aguilar is also a very good catcher playing baseball. And uh, I think, you know, he's somebody that I think you'll see out at the JC again, too, playing. Great leader. Second and 10. Elsie has it at the 45, close to a first down. And Elsie has just made one of the greatest moves of the night. He came over the benches. Almost hit the trophy, managed to not fall down or knock a single thing off the trophy table behind the SCL pitch. And land on his feet. I, I think that that's, oh, I'd love to see a replay of that. Here we go. This, this may be the best finish afterwards. Elsie on the sideline. And it is. It's very good play. They're safe. The big hit is on the field. It's clean. And there he goes over, makes the leap, suddenly sees the trophy, dives, catches the hand. Look at the poise, the balance, and the stretch. It's almost gymnastics. I'd give him a 9.8. Aguilar throws over the middle. Tripo has it at the 36. But everybody in stripes threw a flag on this play. It'll be interesting to see who this one goes against. It would be a first down at the 36. And it's the umpire's call inside there. And the NBL is, is making plays that are keeping the SCL in the game. Of course, we're looking at a situation, if they can indeed score, we'll definitely see an onside kick. Well, 15 yards will be something that will be worth having here. So as they march off this penalty, we'll take a quick break and be back with more in just a moment. California's most precious resource. No, it's not our thousand miles of coastline or our lakes or our rivers. It's not even our majestic stands of ancient redwoods. It's our children that are our most precious natural resource. We can enrich the lives and the future of our children by introducing them to the history and the beauty and the fun of California's state parks. You are watching PNC Channel 3, a service of Post Newsweek Cable in San... took a big hit at the end there. I mean, he showed a lot of poise to get that ball off. It's a shame that he couldn't get something better at the other end of it. But when you're ahead like that and you got people standing back on the goal line, that's hard. The ball's just hanging up there. So Kimo Aguilan, with two big plays in the second half, won the punt return, and now an interception near the goal line to turn away the SCL and the NBL can indeed run out the clock now with 1.25 to go. Aguilar, really good boot, gets the ball open and gets it off, but it's just hanging up there, and he just couldn't get him, his feet set to get the kind of distance he needed to That's hit the tough, end zone. Tough throw. Rolling to his left, trying to throw back across the field deep. Shoemaker from the 5 to the 10 to the 15, the 20, out to the 23-yard line. Nice run. SCL. Giving up one of the longest running plays of the night, as they can perhaps feel that uh, their chances are through tonight. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think a few running plays here in the NBL will uh, have this clinched up. Clock's rolling and we're under a minute. We've seen some big plays here tonight. Definitely some excitement. It wasn't always, uh, it wasn't always pretty. There was a few turnovers, a few fumbles, but these teams put out a great effort and we saw some great athletes play one last high school football game and they put on a great show. Yeah, and some really surprising performance, I think, and most notably by the NBL quarterback, Curtis, who had not played quarterback before. The NBL was just missing the other people to play quarterback. Joe Johnson out to the 34-yard line. Another nice game. Close to another first down. Interesting fact of this game is Curtis did not have to throw a pass in the second half. They had the lead. They got the big punt return and ran it in from there. He did not throw the football one single time in the second half. And the NBL won't have to run a play here after that first down. They've got 25 seconds, but they probably would like to get in one last play. See what they do here. Clock's going, 25. They can run it out. They may just go up and wait. Maybe get in one last one. For the SCL, there's got to be some disappointment. They had played very well at times and had that lead 15 nil. Looks like they're waiting it out, trying to get down, and here it is, the last play. Shoemaker takes it and gets to the 40-yard line, and that will do it for the 1994 Kiwanis All-Star Football Game, the NBL with some big defensive plays and some big offensive plays as well. Curtis's 52-yard touchdown pass to Aguilin. Of course, Aguilin's 53-yard punt return. And the NBL piles up a 24-15 victory here in 1994 to take a 2-1 series lead. Yeah, I think Coach Harderberry is going to be really happy there. He'd been quoted in the paper, said they were going to start a new tradition Saturday. It was going to swing back the NBL. He'd been the coach last year when the NBL lost. I knew that very much he'd wanted to win. So uh, for Mr. Arterberry, he's going to be very happy. But uh, that doesn't take away, I think, at all from the job that was done by Dave Hargrove and the other members of his staff in Casa Grande. They did a great job of preparation. It's very entertaining football by both teams. So the 1994 Kiwanis All-Star Football game that really signifies the kickoff of football season. And I know a lot of guys.